Hey everyone, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a custom Canva frame with color changing vector elements using Affinity Designer. As a bonus, I'll also show you how to quickly create a scrolled quatrefoil using the node tool and one of the built-in shapes. Now I'm using the desktop version of Designer version two. However, you can easily follow along on the iPad version so long as you know where the tools are located. So let's get started. I'm working in a 3000 by 3000 pixel canvas set to 300 DPI. While I am working with vectors, some of my elements are going to be exported as rasters. So just in case I want to use this for something printable in Canva, I'm going to make sure I'm setting it up at a print ready DPI. I'm going to create a scrolled quatrefoil shape like this one that I've duplicated a few times and shift to give it sort of a doodle feel. This is going to create these tiny little cutouts that I'll need to account for when I'm creating my frame. And I'll show you how to quickly incorporate those with very little effort. Now, while I'm creating this particular shape, the same concepts apply to any similar shapes that you might create. To create the quatrefoil, I'm going to start out with a stroke. I don't need a fill and the color doesn't matter. I'll select my cloud shape and holding down shift and command, I'm going to drag out my first shape. Now I'm fine with 12 bubbles, but I want this one to be a little bit more shallow than this. So I'm going to bring my inner radius up to 90 in this case. To create these little points, I need to break apart the top, bottom, and the two side bubbles so that I can flip each of the pieces vertically and horizontally to get these points. To do that, I first need to convert this from a shape layer to a curve layer. So I'll click on convert to curves here at the top. I could also right click on the layer and do it there as well. With my node tool selected, I'm going to click and drag to select these first two nodes, I'll right click on one of the selections and choose break curve. I could also choose it from the contextual menu at the top. I'll select the next two nodes, again, right click and choose break curve. And I'm going to do that all the way around my shape until those four bubbles are split in half. Now that that's done, let's take a look at the layers. I have some remaining pieces that are together. I'm going to hold down command and select those four curves. I want to move them out of my way temporarily, so I'll go up to the top and choose move to back. That's going to move them to the bottom of the layer stack in the artboard. I'll select these top layers by clicking and shift clicking the top layer. And what I want to do is take these and flip them vertically and horizontally to create these points. Right now though, they're all within the same bounding box, which means if I flip them vertically and horizontally, it looks like nothing happened because they're all moving at the same time. What I need to do is flip one and have the others follow suit. To do that, I'm going to go to the contextual menu and choose transform objects separately. What that's going to do is put a bounding box around one, but it's going to maintain the selection of the rest. For those of you on the iPad version, you can find this under the arrow in the contextual menu in the move tools engage. So now I can go up to the top here and flip horizontally and vertically, and there are my points. Now, obviously there's some issues. This looks a little wonky here. It's a little pointy, but we're going to get rid of that next. I'm going to select my node tool and click and drag to select all of my curves, including those that I moved to the bottom. What I want to do is fuse them together to create one single curve. So with them selected, I'll go to the contextual menu and choose join curves. Make sure you're choosing join curves and not close curve. Now for the most part that worked, I am seeing one little issue and that's this one here. Sometimes it doesn't always work and you can kind of tell because this one's red. I'm just going to click and drag to select both of those while my shape is selected. Go back up to the top and just choose join curves and that corrects the issue. Now I still have the problem with these sort of pointed areas here. If I deselect this and zoom in, you can see it's not quite curved and that's because these are sharp nodes here. I'll click and drag to select these two. I'm going to hold shift down so I can click and drag to select these, these, and these. So now that I have those eight nodes selected, I have two options. The first is I can go up here to the top and just choose smooth to convert them from sharp to smooth. But I find I have more control when I use the corner tool. So I can either hit C on my keyboard or just choose the icon. I'll click on one of them and just drag up until I can't drag anymore. Next, I wanna hit bake appearance because whenever you use the corner tool, you wanna to make sure that you set the curves so that if you scale your shape up and down, that doesn't keep shifting. So I'll bake my appearance, deselect, 
and my shape is all set. To create the sort of doodle feel, I'm just going to select this, duplicate it, and sort of shift it around. I'm not going to be too precious about it because I want it to be kind of random. I'm just going to rotate this and maybe move it down. I might also change this particular width to maybe seven, maybe six. Let's see what that looks like. All right, and I'm going to go back to this one, select it, and this time I'll shift this way and maybe move it here. Now these lines are all really thick and there's no variation in the width, so I'm not getting a lot of space here. What I want to do is select all three of my shapes. I'm going to adjust the pressure settings just to give myself some line variation. So I'll click on pressure and I'm going to start out by just dragging these two down. And you can start to see that I'm getting some space there. We're going to write about there. And I'm just going to add a few nodes and just sort of make some nice curves here. And maybe bring that one up. I don't want anything too sharp. I just want some nice rounded curves. Again, I don't want to spend too much time, but I want to have some nice open areas because my frame is going to extend into that. So you'll be able to see the picture in there. When you're creating custom Canva frames, whatever shapes you want to turn into frames need to be a raster element, not a vector. If you want more than one frame, you need more than one raster layer. Now in this case, I just want to create a single frame that not only fills in this space, but fills in all of the gaps left by these little cutouts. And I'm going to do that very easily using the vector flood fill tool. Now the actual bitmap image doesn't matter because it's going to be removed as soon as the frame is pulled into Canva. What does matter though is the final layer stack. Whenever you're dragging an image towards a frame in Canva, it's going to add the image or try to add the image to whatever it sees as the first in the layer stack. If the first layer is something that it can't add an image to, it's not going to do anything. It won't even let you add it to the next layer. In fact, if you release it over the layer, it's going to replace that first one with whatever you've brought in. Let me show you what I mean and head into Canva. This is a circular frame that I created earlier. And if I open this up and look at my layers, my frame is on the top and the vector element is on the bottom. So if I grab one of my images here, I can very easily bring that into the frame because it's sitting above the other one. I can of course also go in and change the color of my vector layer. Now, if I go back into my layers, and I move this above the other. Now, if I grab an image and drag it over, it doesn't let me go into the frame. It's stopping right there. In fact, if I release it, it actually replaces the vector, which is of course what I don't want. So I'm gonna back up. I need to make sure that this layer stays on the top and the vector is on the bottom so that I can very easily drag in whatever image I need. All right, I'm back in designer. And of course I just mentioned that the frame layer needs to be on the top, but I need to be able to do that without covering any of my vector layers, because of course I want to be able to use them in Canva. So I'm going to use the vector flood fill tool to fill in the white spaces wherever these cutouts are created, but I need it to be exact. I don't want it to go beyond any of those shapes, but here's the problem. If I select these three layers and zoom in, and I grab my vector flood fill tool, wherever it creates a drop zone, you can see that it not only does it within the white, it goes beyond to the actual stroke because my stroke is aligned to the center. Unfortunately, changing it to inner or outer doesn't fix that. What I need to do is change this from a stroke to a fill. So with these three layers selected, I'm going to go up to the top here, choose layer and choose expand stroke. It's gonna take a second and then you can see it changes it to a fill. Now I have three layers and I don't need that. I only want one vector layer. So I'll go up to the top here while I have them selected and choose add. Now, if I hover over those areas, you can see that the drop zone is only in the white area. It doesn't go into the black. I mentioned that the image that you use for your bitmap fill doesn't matter, but the type of fill that you use does. So I'm going to select my shape. I'll select my vector flood fill tool. And you want to make sure that you select the tool first and then pick your fill. And here's why. It always remembers the last one you used. And in this case, this is not a bitmap fill. It's just a regular swatch. So I need to make sure that I select either a stock image or I pull an image in. I'm just going to go to my stock images here and click to select one and it's going to change my fill. So now I can just start clicking to add my fill to these shapes. So I'm going to zoom in 
and I'm just going to hover and start clicking to add them into these white spaces. Now, if you've ever used the vector flood fill tool, you know that if you click and continuously drag, you'll end up creating one large curve. And that would be great, except in this case, it wouldn't work because I want to make sure that I don't change this because if I go ahead and fill this just like that, it's going to change it to a bitmap fill. And I want this to stay a vector. So I'm gonna back up. I'm just going to single click, individually click into each of these, including these tiny little spaces here. And then I'll combine everything once I'm done. I've added bitmap fills to all of those spaces, including the tiniest of spaces. And if you look at my layers, I have my vector shape. If I turn this off, you can see it's cut out of the others. And then I have a lot of individual layers here. So I'm going to select that first one, which is this middle. I'll go down to the bottom and shift click to select the last one. And I'll just go up to geometry and hit add because those are curves so I can add them together. I want to make sure this is on the top and so I'm going to drag it up and you can see that because of the way that I created it, it doesn't block any of the black vector space. With that, I have two layers, the bitmap fill that's going to become my frame and my vector shape. So I'm ready to export these and finish up the frame in Canva. I'll head up to the top and choose file and export. Whenever you're exporting for a frame, you want to make sure you do it as a PDF. You can either choose PDF for print or digital high quality. Whichever one you choose, just make sure that your raster DPI stays 300. I'm not going to change anything else. I'll just click export, name my file, and choose my location. I'm going to do that off camera, and then I'll pull it into Canva and finish the frame. There are a couple of ways that you can import a document into Canva. You can start from the home screen in the uploads over here. I'm going to start within this document where I have some other doodle frames, just so I keep everything together. So I'll scroll down to the bottom and choose add page. And what I'm going to do is go to my uploads, choose upload file. I'll find the file. Now it's not going to upload it here. It's going to upload it into my projects. And as soon as it's in place, I can click it and it's going to add it to this page. I can close this because I don't need it anymore. Now let's look at the layers. If I go to my position, you can see my frame is on top and the vectors are on the bottom. So everything is set exactly the way that I need it. If I click on this middle one, if it came in correctly, it's going to give me two options when I choose this delete icon, delete image and delete frame. I want to delete the image and leave the frame. And now I'm all set. I can go back to my uploads here and I can bring in an image. I can change the vector color here and I can very easily continue to drag different images in. Now from here, I can leave this in this document and just copy and paste it into any other canvas and I'm all set. This is part of a series of tutorials where I'll show you how to create your own custom Canva elements in Affinity Designer. So be sure to hit subscribe on my channel so you know whenever I post them. If you have any questions or a request for a tutorial, let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed my teaching style and want to check out my full length classes, you can find the link to both my Skillshare channel and my own learning site, The Creator Collage, in the description below. Lots more tutorials are coming your way, but in the meantime, you might want to check out one of these two next. Thanks for watching.